right. John, speak again. It sounded like you were in a bathroom. What's up? <laughs> yeah, you know, you're just. It sounds like you're like broadcasting live from like a giant cavern. Super echo, but it's it's all right. Damn, I'm in the room and it's just my laptop. <laughs> hey, you don't have to flex on your five thousand square foot home office. We get it. <laughs> just I'm so at the studio. Guys. <laughs> all right. Oh, we're live. We are live. Well, it hasn't started. We'll start. <laughs> so we're gonna start now. <laughs> Oh, wait, you didn't they tell can us hear us or they can't hear us? They can. <laughs> They're laughing at us. You never why told can, us that. I didn't know. Why can they, why can they hear us when we're... We, we're on the... We clicked on the mic test option. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I don't know, hey. man. That's why we're doing this Sam live. Sam set us up. Snicker Doodle has set us I up. I did. All right, we're just uh, going to start. To embarrass ourselves. This is the best way to start this. I just... I want to say <laughs> that right now. I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Yeah. I am also not tagging 200,000 people, but here we go. Well, We're officially live. Welcome to lunch break with 343, and Unishek is taking the call from the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, well, we want to keep it loose. I guess we're just officially starting then. So um, let's first give a shout out. It looks like we got people in the chat. I think I got the chat window open now. So hello. Welcome to all of our community friends. As you may have noticed, this is our first time doing this. Uh, this is a, a new feature to us, so appreciate you bearing with us here as we, uh, we'll probably stumble through this a little bit. But uh, hopefully this will be a new fun way that we can share information and answer questions and just kind of a, a new way that we can engage with each other going forward. So um, with all that being said, this is Sketch talking right now. And uh, y'all want to go around the room real quick and just introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Sam, also Snickerdoodle. Um... Yeah, I work on I work with Brian and John on the community team. Uh, John Unishek, uh, community manager. Y'all see me sometimes on videos and streams, uh, writing blogs here and there. Uh, just excited to be joining for a Discord call. Hey everybody, it's uh, Michael Shore, Forge Lord on Twitter. Um, I'm the Forge lead designer and product owner, and also the product owner for Playlists now. So super stoked to be here. Thanks for joining us. Heck yeah. Okay, so we're not actually going to eat lunch, I don't think, right, guys? I don't think anybody wants to listen to us chewing and smacking no. on food. So let's uh, let's hold our lunches till twelve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, good. Everyone's saying they can hear it. I don't hear it. People are disagreeing with me that you sound like you're in the bathroom, John. So maybe that's on my end. We'll see. Ah, someone says you're in the tub. So there we go. Um, just a quick tactical note. We're going to talk about some topics that we've uh, that we've sort of put together. Primarily Forge and Playlist are kind of in scope here since we have Michael Shore, Forge Lord, with us. Um, we'll do our best to keep an eye on chat, but uh, we won't be able to answer everyone's questions. So we're just going to kind of see how this goes. Um, with that said. You guys, how about we kick things off? Uh, you want to talk about? We just announced this what an hour ago. We have a we have an update coming to the game next week. Yeah, new new blog just went out. I will drop the link in chat here in a second so people can grab it if they haven't seen it. Thank you, Sam. Um, John, do you want to give us a? Uh, we'll we'll come back to shore and talk a little bit more specifically about some of the forge and playlist implications for next week's update. John, do you want to give us just a quick TLDR of a couple of the biggest pieces that you're looking forward to? Yeah. Uh, so we've got mode updates. Uh, Super Fiesta is coming into Arena. And we've got Ranked King of the Hill getting a few balance changes, tuning updates, so that we can see even better matches on the HCS main stage there. Uh, some sandbox tuning updates for the Disruptor. Uh, it's getting a slight rework. The Spike Grenades, Dynamo Grenades, uh, those two are getting a little bit of a nerf, I'd say, but they are also getting some buffs in other areas. So they're they're trying. We're tuning here and there, and then shroud screen and ranked uh, currently has two charges. It's going down to one. Uh, that way, you are very intentional with the one that you do use. Uh, Forge is getting some nice uh, bug fixes and PC players will be able to upload their screenshots uh, to their assets. I know Michael could probably speak more to all the Forge stuff, so moving on over to FPS counter on Xbox. If you're on a console, you can also now turn on that setting in the UI that PC players have had. Uh, 
Uh, it's super helpful. It's going to be uh, extremely valuable for forgers uh, as well as some competitive players that love knowing their frame rate. UX UI, this is a really, really cool one. We have Custom Games Browser uh, coming out from, it's. it was in the Community tab. Sorry, it's not leaving there. It is also staying in the Community tab, but we're bringing it to the Main Menu flow as well. So when you click on Custom Game and Main Menu, you can also see a custom game browser option. Then matchmaking, we are taking the overall playlist view and expanding it from five to 10 playlists being uh, visible all at once. Uh, yep, it expand, all caps in the chat, thank you. <laughs> 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 then uh, we are also, this one I think is probably one that people are gonna love quite a bit, uh, a selection of bundles from previous seasons will be able to be purchased through the customization menu. That means when you are looking at your Spartan in the armor hall, you're looking at the weapon on the weapon bench, and you see a part of it that you don't have unlocked that is available in the store or was in one of those select bundles, uh, you can just click on it, inspect it, and it gives you an option to go view the bundle and buy that bundle. So you can get it anytime. You don't have to wait for it to rotate back into the shop. Um, it is a selection of bundles from previous seasons, right? There's, it's not everything all the time, or sorry, it's not everything right now, but just a, pre, uh, a small selection there. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. Resolved issues, lots of bug fixes. Um, you can see server and client stability. That just means less crashes uh, for your match all up or your game specifically theater and observer improvements uh, we're going to have even more info on those in the full patch notes on the halo support site and uh, wasp weapon jamming we've seen that come up that's when you're on the bumper jumper contro control scheme we've got a fix for that which is great and uh, cutscenes we've seen people talk about settings resetting and cutscenes always replaying we believe we've got an improvement for cutscenes. Uh, for settings, please continue to file uh, tickets on the Halo support site with uh, examples, all the details for why you're hitting it, when you're hitting it. We've been looking into it. The team's made good progress there, but more info always helps. Uh, so we're gonna keep uh, an eye on that as well. But yeah, lots of good stuff. I'm excited. Uh, I know players have been asking for Pretty much every single one of these updates or bug fixes so just really really cool stuff and i'm glad we're getting it out next week cool thanks john and i think sam snickerdoodle did drop the link but there is a full blog on waypoint uh if you missed it encourage you to check that out later you can read a little bit more into uh, some of the stuff that unicheck just just covered there oh, there it is again also, a quick note, I've seen people in chat saying that they're having problems hearing us. Um, a couple folks are suggesting uh, if you can't hear us, you need to click on the lunch break. And I think they're saying turn off the music. So um, if you're still having some audio problems, uh, check out the chat. It looks like some folks are offering help there. Michael Shore, John uh, touched on a number of things. I heard him mention Forge and Playlist a couple times. Um, do you want to break down? Maybe you want. What do you want to start with? You want to start with Forge. You want to start with Playlist. Kind of like to get your perspective. Obviously, as Forge Lord, uh, what are you looking forward to um, with next week? And uh, of course, once we get through next week's update, we do want to talk to you as well about season four and, and kind of get a little peek about a little further out as well. Sure. Let's let's start with Forge. Um, I do want to say that I'm like Fiesta is my main thing, so I am so friggin excited for super fiesta i can't wait i was i was loving it in btb uh for season three i just can't wait for super fiesta to be part of the fiesta playlist so that's going out um <clears throat> the biggest thing for forge i think that most people are going to be excited about is just the pc screenshot upload right um we had to turn that off uh for safety reasons but we've we've now have the support for the safety team so we're turning that back on so pc forgers thank you for your patience um as of tuesday you should be able to take uh screenshots with the uh the windows game bar or the xbox game bar and uh and then add those to your maps and publish those just like you would do on uh, xbox so that's a huge win there i'm super excited that we finally landed that again 
Thank you for your patience. Um, um, that would be Wednesday, correct? The yes, Wednesday, Wednesday not, not Tuesday. Apologies. Yeah, we're, I normally, got my days. We normally do do Tuesday launches, but uh, next week we're doing Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for the clarity or the clarification there. Um, yeah, and then the you know the other fixes that we have coming uh, the Node Graph budget fix. Um, so for this this update, we have a, a quick fix, which basically makes it so there's a 128 node limit to script to every script brain. So that's for any script brain, you can have 128 per script brain um, nodes. Um, existing script brains that have more than 128, this will not break them. You just will not be able to add any more to that node until you bring it down below 128. Uh, and there's a there's a pop-up dialog that shows up when you've reached that, um, that limit. For season four, we do have incoming um, additional budget um, updates, additions, and fixes that will sort of add on to this. But for now, this is... Um, we got this out quick just so we could help folks who were running into node graph issues. This will prevent you from getting into a bad state. Hey, Michael, uh, can I ask yeah. you real quick? I just saw a question went by in chat. Um, can you explain why this limit is in place? Um, it's, it's complex, uh, but essentially the way that we have to manage uh, node graph entities um, means, uh, and particularly with the UI and the way it was built, uh, once you get above 128 entities per, um, per script brain, uh, you're just running afoul of a UI at a memory limit. Um, which then was cascading into the map itself. So um, again, for season four, the, the definitions of entities and simulation memory and node graph budgets and things like that, we'll, we'll make that more clear in an upcoming update. Um, so I can't really go into details because honestly, I don't know the, the, the full details, but I do know that it has a lot to do with UI entities and just and how they affect our memory. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah, and so um, the next thing in line is auto saves. So there's two issues. One was fixed. One will be fixed uh, for one four. Um, and the first one is like when you crash, Forge was not auto saving your work, which was a big pain in the butt, right? So we have fixed that for this next update. The right now in the product, the live product, there's when you exit Forge normally. It is also creating an autosave. Uh, I know this is the bane of some of your existences uh, out there, and I appreciate that. For this update, that, fisk, that fix was just too risky to include, so we pushed it to 1.4. So we're aware of it. We do have a fix. So every time you leave Forge right now, it's going to create an autosave. Uh, just know that. You can go into your, your uh, version history and delete that if you want. And 1.4 is 1.4. It's kind of our release of a of season four for folks. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm so used to that. I should have said season dev. four. <laughs> yeah. The game dev language. Um, and then the next thing, um, we have improved Forge precision movement. Um, so uh, when you in the snap settings, if you go to um, the Z fighting or the 0.001 snap setting, things are going to move incredibly slow and incredibly uh, precise. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, especially in the up down axis when you're moving objects around, this is going to be a big, big deal. Um, our internal level designers have been complaining about this and as has the community. So, this is a big deal. Um, Forge bookmarks disappearing, that's fixed now. Um, so if someone that you've bookmarked an asset from, if they delete that asset, all your bookmarks will not disappear anymore. Hooray. Um, and then the other one that was really frustrating was some folks couldn't uh, load into an older version of your map. You know, you'd make 100 versions or 1,000 versions, and you'd go try to load into an older one, and it would only load into the latest one, which was locking you out of um, even maybe even fixing your map if it got corrupted or something. So that's fixed with this update too. So those are the big forge things that um, we're we're stoked about. Yeah, okay. I know team's been eager to get these into the hands of our uh, forge community. Um, we'll come back to forge 
um, in a minute, maybe Michael and we'll, we can kind of look beyond uh, next week's update. But before we do that, um, on the topic of next week, do you have did you have anything else uh, on the playlist side of things that you might want to touch on, um, expanding on some things that Unishek mentioned earlier? I think the big deal was, you know, for playlists next week, we're going to be having the Super Fiesta playlist going on. Um, so that's kind of, that's top of mind for me. Um, also, there, I'm just bringing up my... Hey, Michael, somebody was asking about Super Fiesta. Is that going to replace Fiesta? Is it, like, what, how is that going to work? Oh, that, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, it's not going to replace Fiesta. So what the Fiesta, um, what the Super Fiesta playlist is going to look like, it's going to basically be all of the current Fiesta, um, experiences along with now the Super Fiesta experiences side by side. Um, and then eventually, I just talked about this yesterday, uh, eventually we're just going to be making a Super Fiesta mode that combines everything. Um, so you'll be ping-ponging back and forth between normal Fiesta and Super Fiesta. And right. normal Fiesta is random weapon loadouts with the regular MP weapons. Super Fiesta is random weapon loadouts with the, the campaign weapons. So in that, like, actually, as I'm thinking about it, if once it's all combined, is there the possibility you could spawn with, like, the sidekick and the Ravager, but also, like, the updated grapple? Like, the upgraded yep. grapple? Cool. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's how Halo 5 worked, yep. and I, I think we want to eventually get to that. I would love that. I think that would be a ton yeah. of fun. Uh, no, sweatpants. It's going to be one playlist for now. It's, it's going to have both Super Fiesta and Fiesta in the same playlist. Hopefully uh -huh. that answered that question. I like that we can just answer questions. It's super cool. Yeah, uh, this is going. This is I like. I'm digging this format. This is great. Appreciate everybody in the chat too. Good questions. Everybody's wholesome. Yeah. This is this is a good time. This is one of the best lunches I've had in a while. Um, <laughs> hey, we, we had lunch yesterday. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you know where it ranks, John. I didn't know you were yeah. in the chat, John. I thought I thought you were gone. Sorry. <laughs> hey, do um, you want to keep the topic on playlist just for a little bit here, uh, Michael? And then we'll yeah, kinda, sure. and then we'll kind of loop back to Forge because um, I'm just kind of looking at some of our notes. There's a couple things that I know we wanted to touch on. One thing I just wanted to maybe tee you up here, and I, not to put you on too much of the spot and and turn this into a TED talk, but <laughs> you know we get a lot of questions in general around playlists and the philosophy of playlists. And I think the biggest question is just like, why isn't my favorite mode or playlist there all the time? Please add this one, please add this one. Um, part of that, we have rotationals, we, we bring things in, we bring things out, but I think it'd be great just to hear from your perspective as kind of the, the lead that is responsible for our playlist plans. Just what is your philosophy and what would you like people to know? Like, how do you guys approach it? Why don't we just have every playlist all the time? Um, and just like, yeah, just help us kind of understand where we are and maybe also kind of how are you thinking about the future? Sure. You know, pleasing everyone all the time is a real challenge, um, as you might expect. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use quick play as an example because that's probably the thing that players play the most. Um, quick play, you know, the, the goal around quick play is not to feature everything in the game. The goal is to provide experiences that are in general always going to be fun and good and you know i'll be the first to admit that like some of our map mode combinations aren't the best right that's just how it goes and so like what we try to do is look at player sentiment we look at uh, at playlist data and we try to make really educated and sound decisions about what's gonna in general uh on average provide players the best experience right um and sometimes that's at the expense of an experience that you might actually really like, right? Like sometimes the numbers just aren't in your favor or even the sentiment isn't in your favor. Um, and so that's, that's the main reasoning why we are, we limit things in quick play, for example. Um, I don't think the idea of adding everything to quick play is the best idea. Um, you know, we'd probably have close to 80 experiences in that. Um, and we could certainly weight things so the greatest hits, so to speak, would be the things that happen the most. But you'd still have this this chance of getting a really kind of crappy experience, right? And so, like, I really for quick play, we don't want that. Um, that said, 
um, we're trying to figure out a good way to take, I'm calling these the experiences that don't meet the bar for greatest hits. I'm calling those B-sides, right? They're like, you know, a band makes an album and they put all their greatest hits together, but like maybe songs that weren't um, the best quality or just didn't fit with the theme, they go into the B-sides. So like our B-sides, right? How do we fit those into um, our playlists? Um, so I think rotationals are a great place for those experiences that didn't perform well or don't have good sentiment, but some players still kind of dig. Rotationals are a good place for that. And so we're trying to figure out how to divvy up the 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 playlist, the quick play between the the greatest hits, um, new you know new experiences, right? When new maps and modes comes out, come out, we want to add that as appropriate. And then also, where do we put those B sides? Um, and so we're not. I don't think we have an answer to that quite yet. Um, but I think by one four, we'll, uh, sorry, season four, um, we'll have a better answer to um, what's what's more of a staple in in quick play, and then where those B sides are going to live. Um, they're not going to necessarily go away forever either, right? Like the goal is not to like arbitrarily just remove things. Um, just we want to make sure players are having the best experience possible. Got it. Um, any let's see any questions in the chat about what you just said uh, before we chat is loving the music references. Uh, I did see a question just about some some. Spe- I want to be clear. There's some questions about ranked and some stuff around ranked. Um, Tashi, who folks may know as our esports uh, lead at the studio, he also is the lead responsible for our ranked playlists and ranked experiences. So. Um, I think we probably just would table those questions and those topics. And I do think it would be awesome to get Tashi in here soon for, to do totally. another one of these. And we could just really deep dive into rank. Cause there's a lot to unpack there. I know they've also been busy doing a lot of work and revamping uh, some of the systems there. And I know Tashi would be excited to come in and, and talk more about that. So we'll, we'll kind of park that, that bucket of, of topics for now, but um, it's, it's a good point to raise and uh, we'll work with Tashi to come back and, and, and do a session just on that in the future. Yeah, one of the questions I saw was last Spartan standing, and I don't, I don't really have an update necessarily, but I have spoken to the modes team. Um, they're, 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 they're not keen on killing it. Like they just, they know that it needs some work, and so they're working on um, fixing it. Uh, I just don't know when that's gonna, when that work's gonna happen. But they, you know, it is an experience that we do want to eventually uh, put back out in the wild. Awesome. Um... Let me see here. I'm looking at my list. You covered a lot of those good topics there. Um, yeah. Sure. I, I think, yeah, I see your, I I see your cursor. That. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You saw my cursor. Yeah, totally. Uh, so <laughs> also um, we're putting out um, the Super Escalation Slayer variant um, in BTB, in the BTB Unlimited uh, playlist. Uh, it's going to be Super Escalation Slayer. So it's um, That's there escalation. right now. Yeah, it, that's it's live already right now. out? That's live right oh, now, thought, yeah. No, well, never mind. <laughs> I, well, I got folks my, not know I got that. Breaking news crossed. with Michael Short today. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if, if, if we're talking new BTB stuff, can we talk about my new favorite thing coming? That is, would that be bullet point four? Uh, quite possibly. I yeah. Okay. I sheet. love them. I feel like I I'm not invited to some party. Are you guys on yeah. like a Word doc right now? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're on a Word doc. Oh, you're you're using that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was in so, the team's chat. <laughs> I, Sam, I'm actually with you. I'm really excited about this. Um, so. We've long had the idea to put out a playlist that's an experimental playlist, right? It's this, it's a kind of playlist that comes out, hangs out for a week or two, and it's a work in progress or it's a new experience that we're maybe unsure about, right? And then we get it out there for a couple of weeks. It's public, y'all play it. Um, and then we link to a survey and then you give us feedback. And then we go back, we take it away from the playlist and we work on it and we improve it. And then we release it later or do another experimental playlist. So um, several weeks back, I think um, someone had caught wind that um, the community was um, really hyped on BTB heavies, right? It's a legacy mode. Um, so we took that to heart. Some of the designers in-house um, spent um, some of their free time and just worked out a quick and dirty version of BTB heavies. We played it in in-house and we were like, hey, this is pretty cool. So uh, upcoming our experimental playlist, which is called the Combat Workshop, um, the first uh, try at that is going to be BTB heavies. I think this is, what week is that going out? That would be 
the week of not next week i think it's the week after i think i think it's the yeah i think you're right i think it's the week of um the 16th um so um that's going to be the first thing i believe it'll be out for two weeks um and there'll be a link to a survey at some point where you can give feedback on that we're going to collect that feedback and then go and improve that and you know make changes and eventually BTB heavies will be in some rotational, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the, the whole goal is to kind of get things out early, get feedback with y'all. You know, I love establishing more points of contact and having a better dialogue with the community. And this is one of the ways to do it. Um, and we'll, you know, in the future, we'll be doing more things like this. It might be, I don't know, we could do map, um, map white boxes, get your feedback. We could do uh, experimental modes. Like it, the sky's the limit really. So I'm excited to get this started. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the chat uh, the playlist calendar for May, uh, which outlines exactly when Combat Workshop will be dropping as well as everything else going on in that playlist rotation. Uh, somebody's asking about the will the surveys be linked or limited to Microsoft account details. I actually think we're going to be trying something new on our end as well. And I think the goal is to get the surveys linked in the in-game MOTD uh, using a QR code. So you'll be able to pull it up on your phone and fill it in that way, hopefully. Hey, um, John, can I bring this up? I'm going to put you in the spot here for a second. Um, no, I got to go. No, it's <laughs> again. I, I, I thought you've been going for, since we started. This, so you, you are in the bathroom. I yeah, mean, I know, right? <laughs> um, no, but uh, I should also let folks know just, just much like Tashi is our, is our studio lead that oversees the ranked experiences. We also have uh, other teams and we have, we have a group that oversees the actual modes. Um, but I did see a question come up a few times, John, and I know this is something you've been in contact with um, basically around sort of the Pelican drops and sort of the feedback that I know you've been chasing down for a while about some of the uneven uh, vehicle drops in BTB. Um, can you just speak to that real briefly? Because I know you've been working with the play with the modes team quite a bit on that. Um, again, not asking you to like commit to anything, but just you can acknowledge that that is something the team's aware of, and that you've had recent conversations, and it's something that they're going after. Correct? Yes. I don't know what it would look like in terms of timing or even feasibility on truly executing on it. I know it was actually a complex underlying system causing those drops to fall out of sync uh so i don't want to come out and say we've got any like, oh sure full promises yep. there but team is definitely aware right uh we, we had mentioned it in previous I, I think another blog before um and maybe in one of our outcomes blogs but yes we're definitely aware pelican drops right it's, my number one thing for improving the big team battle experience when I go and talk to the team. Um, and they, they are aware. Cool. Yeah. That's I, just to reiterate, we're not, we can't promise a specific what update, what might happen, but I did just want to remind folks that that is something that's been consistent feedback from players. It is something on the team's radar and is something that they definitely would like to go after and, and try and improve upon. So uh, oh, let's see what's happening in chat. People are arguing if they can or can't hear Unishek. Yeah, apparently um, some people, like, you're... Maybe, maybe John blocked them all, and that's why they can't hear him. I don't, you know... Wouldn't put him past them to block Kevin. <laughs> my perfect strategy. <laughs> all right, let's see. Back to the mystery uh, word doc that Unishek doesn't seem to have access to. Um, anything else there in that playlist bucket, sure, from your perspective? There's one more that's upcoming that I'm pretty excited about. Um... There was, you might have known recently, Forge Hub had a, a 2v2 um, map uh, competition. And um, we cherry picked some of those maps um, from that community. And we'll be having a community's doubles playlist um, in the upcoming weeks. Um, so super excited to be able to do something like that. Um, you know, kind of a variant on the, the community collection. Um, excited to play doubles myself. Um, so, uh, so congrats and um, thanks to the map ingestion team uh, for helping with that. So excited to get, again, Anytime we add uh, Forge community content into our playlist is a huge win, in my opinion. So uh, glad to get that going. Oh, hold that thought, because I think that was our next topic we want to talk yep. about, right? Because I know we have a lot segue. of questions. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just 
I'm going to jump on this landmine here myself. I, I want to answer this question because I feel like we hear it come up a lot. Any news about a match composer? Um, I just wanted to acknowledge, and I, th I think we maybe have danced around this before in various ways. I don't have anything I can officially confirm today and certainly don't have a date, but I do want to acknowledge, um, and sure, you might have some perspectives here. There are, The team definitely has aspirations to continue sort of improving the matchmaking experience. Obviously, the match composer and MCC uh, fans really responded well to it. We think it, it worked out great. Um, it really brought a lot to that title. Um, I can confirm that, you know, some version of how do we evolve beyond our current sort of strict playlist model uh, is absolutely on uh, top of mind for the team. Um, it is a significant amount of work. So this is not, I, I want to be very clear, this is not something that's going to happen. Uh, it's not coming next season. Like this is, this is a little further out once we have real information and, and it really hits a release vessel. Uh, we'll have a lot more to say, but I do know we get this question a lot. And, and I think we all agree that we would like to continue to see our playlist and matchmaking model evolve and, and try and get to something closer to where MCC has today, where players just have a lot more agency over, over what those experiences are. Um, is that fair to say? Sure. Yeah, totally. I, I don't think I have more details in, in general to add, but like the goal ultimately is to let players play their way, right? Um, and so some sort of choice um, in terms of the matchmaking experiences that you want to or don't want to play is certainly in line with that. Awesome. And I, yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. Yeah. But again, it, it, it's a it's a bit out. And I guess, sorry, now we're kind of getting all over the place. And maybe at the very end, we'll just do a quick, like, we'll just rapid fire, try and jump on questions. But sure. um, this isn't playlist specific, but it is a question coming up a lot. Similar career progression. I think Sean Barron has touched on this in the past. We also know this is super important. Um, we've The team has already, this is an act of development. I will put this in that category and we will have more to share on that uh, pretty soon. So folks should stay tuned on that, but we hear you. We agree. We all, we all want to get this back into the game. We know it's an important part of kind of what makes Halo more fun to keep playing um, and just stay tuned. Uh, the, the team is actively working on that and we'll have some more information uh, in the not too distant future. So, uh, Michael, with that, we want to pivot back over. You were you left us left us off. You mentioned community maps coming into matchmaking. Um, yeah. Obviously, we've got the community collection playlist. I think we've had uh, two revs of that so far. We've seen yep. maps debut there. Then we've seen some of those maps kind of start to permeate into our core playlists. Um, maybe you want to set the framework there. Like, what? How do you? What's the vision behind that? How are you in viewing? community-made maps, the role they play, kind of where are we going? I mean, they're I mean, they're critical to just adding variety to what you're playing day to day, right? Um, and, you know, it's also like, I, I like, you know, adding community maps to our playlist, I like is also, uh, is kind of a North Star and an aspirational thing for Forgers. Like, I always want someone who's in Forge or maybe is thinking about Forge to go to go into a playlist to know that this is a, a, a UGC, you know, it's a map made in Forge or even a mode made in Forge and go, I would like to do that, right? I can do this or I want to do this, right? To me, like, um, that's one of the key things of that is showcasing what Forge can do, what the community can do, and also inspiring others to do the same, right? I love that loop. Um, you know, and like, and to double down on the variety, like it's just good to have variety in our in our experiences, right? Um, so by adding these things to Fiesta and Tactical Slayer and the Community Collection, and then um, eventually p potentially adding them to Quick Play and or Ranked, um, it's just it's a win for everybody. And I look at the the community matchmaking or the community collection as sort of the the stepping stone. It's like that's the place where maps go, and then they get to soak in the products. People get to play them. We get to see you know uh, if maps are crashing, if players are liking them or not, all these things. And then um, if they're doing well, there's all the potential for them to. Um, go into quick play with maybe more iterations, uh, maybe a little more QA. Um, and then to go into ranked, there's another flow for that as well. Um, at that point, you've, we'll, you'd be testing with uh, the pro team and Toshi's, Toshi's crew to make sure that um, your map is um, competitive. Um, 
but we already have one map um, in the works going to ranked. So, um, so it's it's all possible. That's kind of rambling. Yeah. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah. I think it did. I don't know. What does chat say? Did that make sense? Okay, I think so. I see some thumbs up. Sounds amazing. Awesome. Um, let's see. What else do we got here? Are you currently looking for anything in particular in terms uh, of community maps? So you might have noticed last week that we added some uh, new uh, asset tags to the tag collection. Um, and some of those say 343 ask, I believe. Um, and those are the first part of us asking for content. Um, we don't have an official ask yet, um, but I'd say the big potential for future asks are probably Husky Raid and BTB. Um, this isn't concrete yet, but that's where I see the the winds. Uh, that's the you know prevailing winds in the, in that way. Husky Raid is one of the greatest of all time. I agree. Um, I agree. Murdy <laughs> wants to know what Husky Raid is. Ah, Husky Raid is a on, it started as like an action secchi mode, I think in the Halo 4, maybe a little bit before then. Um, but it is a single tunnel, capture the flag, fiesta, random weapon spawns. And you just run and clash with each other and try and get the flag out of the other team's base. And you're just all fighting down a singular hallway. Uh, in Halo 5, we expanded that and had... Uh, it changed from a single hallway to like a curved hallway or uh, a couple different hallways, right? And changed it up a little bit, but very much yes to CTF down a very tight, small like play space. And it's just a massive tug of war of destruction. It is it's, chaos. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Rochambeau with a flag, as Chris said in chat, if you have played the custom game Rochambeau. Uh, pretty much just like that with the flag that you've got to get all the way back to your base. Uh, somebody said like Castle Wars and the same general concept, right? Where it's like you, it's just mm -hmm. a battle of attrition to get to the flag, but not really outside of that. I need infinite Castle Wars in an official capacity. Please, Michael Shore. <laughs> Please, John. Yeah. You know he makes me driving that warthog off the map constantly. Yeah, that's true. Loud and clear. Um, one of the interesting things that I think we might do with uh, when we get to a Husky Raid ask is basically release a, a Husky Raid template, right? Husky Raids are generally, like 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 uh, Uni said, they're just a hallway and they're a certain size. So we might just release a, a map template that's just a basic like hallway with at the appropriate size uh, with the... the um, the flags in the right spaces with spawns and then just let players go crazy um, and i think it's a um by doing that i think we'd be making the it, the the bar to entry for actually making husky raid experiences pretty low right like the functionality would be in the map you just have to art it up and maybe change a little bit of geo so i'm hoping that's one of the things we can do when we get to that ask I think that's actually how we got so many husky raid maps in halo 5. i think there was a Husky Raid competition, and they built a bunch of templates that yeah. people just had to art up. I think that's yeah. how, it, how it happened. And then you had, what, Unsorted Kim's Donut one, which was super fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a uh, Halo control room yep. uh, Husky Raid where it was very much that circle, right? We're, we're, we're in the Halo control room, and flags were on either side. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's always fun variants on the hallway theme. Um, let's see. We touched on content tagging system. If you missed mm -hmm. it, Snickerdoodle did link relink that blog here in the chat. And uh, for folks that I, I do believe, um, sorry, not, not to dredge up pain points, but initially we did have an issue with those tags. I, my understanding is that has been resolved this week. So everything should be working as planned now, correct? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Um, Additionally, I think we also there's also some resources that we've uh, you've helped put together as well, Michael, around um, kind of a checklist, like things that player forgers can do to sort of help improve their chances of creating a matchmaking worthy map. 
Yeah. Um, Sam, did you just link it? Um, or can you link it? I am more than happy to link it again. But yeah, it is here in the cool. server, actually. So um, not only in, in this server do we have that document, but also on the Halo support site, um, we have the, the Forge map checklist. And that's basically like, those are all the things that if you do those things to your map and you follow those guidelines, um, you're really setting yourself up for success in terms of a map that has the potential to be in a playlist, right? Um, so that's like, that's sort of the, the first, first way to either a aim your map towards playlists or just make your map good in general right these it's you know if you don't have a goal to put your map in a, in a playlist these are still good guidelines to make an experience that is is playable that functions correctly that has good spawns etc cetera, etc cetera. speaking and, of uh oh sorry go ahead oh no i was i was just going to continue like yeah um, go for it um you know and to kind of continue on how to get my map into quick play, right? We I get that question a lot. And I think the the Forge map checklist is definitely the first start. Um, you know, a lot of people, um, I've seen a lot of remakes, which are always um, a fun thing, right? Um, I would do want to say that one-to-one -one remakes are not necessarily always viable um, for a playlist, at least a more arena focused playlist um, that isn't a legacy type of playlist um, due to the differences in the sandbox, right? We've got um, the repulsor play, we've got grapple play, we've got weapons that do different things with different ranges, players that jump different, players that slides, et cetera, et cetera. So like remakes are always great, but um, if you really wanna, if you're still, again, if you're aiming for that, um, that playlist slot in a regular playlist, um, definitely account for the infinite sandbox is a big deal and that could be as simple as just scaling the map up and allowing for the new um, the new sandbox movements uh, making sure that you got grapple points making sure that uh, your your uh, like clamber heights are consistent uh, things like that um, so um, if you know on uh, on that topic, if you see gaps in the Forge map playlist um, that you have questions about, please reach out. Um, I always love to hear that stuff because I definitely feel like that's a living document and that we should be always adding to it so folks have the most info they can have to make a good map. Great points. Great points. Um, anything else on community maps to matchmaking? I did want to have a few minutes uh, sure, just to kind of... Yeah entice you into giving us a little bit of a uh, forge insights on kind of what the team's working on um beyond next week um but before we anything else you want to close off on community maps to matchmaking let me just see if we have any questions regarding that i did see one asking uh would is there any chance there might ever be like a legacy throwback like kind of ugc playlist added is that something you've ever thought about oh yeah definitely like uh, i i think the there was like a classic halo uh uh, group that just put out some stuff recently um, that looked really fun like things like that eventually we we'll, we will definitely want to get out into a playlist um, so you know I don't have an ETA on when those types of experiences will make it to a playlist but definitely not averse to adding that at all I think that would be exciting yeah the, according to the chat which I think you've already touched on and we also acknowledge a lot of interest in BTB Forge maps in particular. Um, I just think, you know, I think we all just want, we love BTB, we want more BTB. Um, yeah. I safe to say the just the investment from Forgers and from our team uh, for BTB map is obviously a little bit more significant. Uh, so safe to assume it's just everything just it takes a little bit longer, I assume, for the scale of a BTB map. Is that safe to say? It, definitely, both from the creation side and I also just think from the testing side, you know, you need eight people to test an arena map. You need uh, 24 to test a BTB map. So just much more investment all up. But uh, also, c could we, the uh, combat workshop, kind of the experimental playlist that you mentioned earlier, could could certainly, one of the goals there is just to reduce friction and help us get content from sort of prototype iteration into players' hands faster, which could end up helping people with BTB content like that as well, right? Yep, totally. Okay. And in fact, that, that is a BTB experience that will be in the, the combat workshop. I mean, Space Crab says we have a lot of BTB maps that are basically ready for matchmaking. 
<laughs> All righty. It, it's only that it's that simple, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's Can I see. Ask a question around that, like, and I know go like, for it. You're not gonna. I know we're not gonna get like an exact answer, but from like, what is the rough timeline from like the start of a map to it getting into matchmaking? Like, how long does a map actually take? Because I'm sure other uh, people have no idea either, and I'm sure it's longer than any of us expect. So for I can't really speak to creating a map and getting it to a point where it's you know you're like this is pretty much done right um i see some of the forgers in they're saying two to three months it's, you know i always estimate at least four months for someone from the community to make something um, um and then once once uh those you know so in terms of ingesting um a map into halo infinite that takes about two months um and that's a lot of that is really like it's finding the map right from from the point that we find the map it's about two months and we um we reach out to the author or or the group that has made this map um we we play test it internally we give them feedback on um suggested changes and needed fixes um and then we send it back to them and then they on their own time do the fixes and then they send it back when those fixes are complete and then we play test and we do that uh, loop a couple of times until all the things that needed to be fixed are fixed. Um, and then internally, we run that through uh, QA to make sure that we're not missing anything critical. Uh, we also go through, um, we need to make sure that the names and the descriptions are appropriate and we do a little bit of that loop. And then we just schedule a time to put it into a playlist. And that generally takes around two months. So all up, I would say from if I asked you for a BTB or an arena map tomorrow, the earliest it could probably make it into the Halo Infinite, uh, into Halo Infinite would be six months from tomorrow. So basically, super easy. Got it. <laughs> totally easy. <laughs> that's so, that's that's so much work. Okay. Um, Let's. I like to shift back to Forge then, if we can. Right. Sure. sure. Since 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 you are the Forge Lord, you see my question there at the at the dock. Like, kind of, what's next for Forge? What are you and the team really working on right now? Like, what 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 can we look forward to that you're able to talk about? Um. So, and uh, most of these things I've pretty much gone on record already. So it won't be news to everybody but for season four um we've got the mini game mode and some generic objects that are shipping uh that's super exciting you know so if you know using slayer or ctf or strongholds isn't um what you want to make as a mode variant within forge we'll now introduce the mini game mode which is basically just a um a blank slayer variant right and then you can just change the mode to your to your liking so that's pretty exciting we're going to have a uh, generic ball generic skull object so you can um you know use those types of objects in your um, modes so that's pretty good um we have a, a whole host of budget improvements um you know i'll be the first to admit that our budget um from forge launch to now has been a little um uh obtuse uh, i guess that's probably the best word and like we have new budgets that are coming online um, and new names and new descriptions that are going to hopefully, you know, help forgers understand the state of their map in terms of budget and also manage it. Um, so excited about thing, you know, things like animation states, physics budgets, collision budgets, um, node graph budgets. Um, those are all new elements that are going to be coming online for season four. Um, and the, the water plane object is coming. Um, a, a lot of you folks um, have asked for water, and we have a scalable water plane coming in in season four. Should I go on? I guess I'm just I'm just kind of checking the chat. <laughs> I'm going to jump in and talk about scalable water plane. It's like the coolest thing I have done in Infinite Forge. Uh, I told you, Michael. But, yeah, no, that uh, was a great message. Yeah, you know, when I was testing it out uh, myself, there was just, I was fiddling, there was a hole on a map. I was like, you know what would be great? If I could fill this hole and just make it look like water it was there, right? And it was just a pond. Uh, and I just took the water plane and I scaled it up from this little tile and it just completely immediately filled this hole. And it was just, it felt like you were truly making a map. You were... It almost felt like you were a god, you know, you're just like, let there be water, you know, 
uh, and it completely changed the map. It was so cool. It was so cool. Yeah, it's really powerful. And right now, forgers are using the Myers canvas to, uh, if they want water, because the terrain of that canvas does feature water. So um, now you should be able to put water kind of wherever you want. S somebody asked if it's a new vehicle. <laughs> That would be amazing, but no. <laughs> it is not a biplane. <laughs> um, I'll just go on because these are cool. Yeah, like, yeah uh, go on. You know, we have some updates to the VFX system. Uh, so for season four, uh, players are going to be able to scale their VFX objects. Um, in addition, you'll be able to toggle damage and the audio from the VFX on or off. Um, and then in terms of art, the I think the biggest add to that is that uh, we're the the we've finished the forerunner object palette so um the the rest of the forerunner object palette is going to go live in season four um so those are the big those are the big ads for uh for forge um i do i know we're we're running out on time here uh i do want to uh, i'll address the 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 ai in forge um we are still working on that it is awesome. I don't have a release date for you, but it is coming, um, and it's is it's everybody's as awesome as you you think it's going to be. Oh, I liked whoever called it more runner. That was that was pretty clever. <laughs> All right, taking a look at the chat here. I think I'm I'm looking over at your reference doc. I think you've you've covered on the things that we came into this chat wanting to make sure that we touched on. Um, we don't have much time left here. I'm seeing a lot of questions about, let's see, wait, what now? Vote for Nick's future. John is, tr Unishek is trying to ban Uber Nick from the server. John, come on, we're having serious <laughs> conversations about Forge AI here. All right, the chat is undeniably um, bringing up a single topic that Sure, Unishek. Um, also, I want to point out, uh, John, we have a whole other internal chat that we've all been on, except for you, the entirety of this call that you seem to not have open. So I just want to let you know you're missing out. So, yeah, it's John's fault that we can't answer this question right now. <clears throat> pizza. I see lots of questions about pizza. I'm here for that. Maybe I'll have pizza for lunch. Uh, pizza sounds really good. It does, um, it? Really good. We go down to flat stick. Okay, yeah, I guess um, we don't have so we don't have a plaza update at the moment. Um, I guess I'll we can just say that I, I see people asking about it, so we do not have an update on that yet. I think we did. It was teased by Sean, I believe, right, John, on a stream, and then I think you tweeted about it um, a while back. But we don't have an update on that yet. That was me and Michael Shore. In oh, the, you and Shore. I'm sorry. Yeah, in the holiday live stream. Yeah. Okay. As soon as we have an update, we will share it. Okay, four minutes. I don't know. Closing thoughts, closing remarks. You want to cherry pick anything from chat there, Shore? Anything else you'd like to say? No, I, I mean, I think I kind of said everything that I, I wanted to say. Honestly, this has been okay. really fantastic to have this kind of chat and just sort of do the, it's like a stream light, you know, without yeah. the video. It's been, it's been really great. Yeah, I, I want to give a shout out to everyone uh, that joined us here and took the time and kind of bared with us. This is our first time trying this out. I think this is a pretty fun platform. It, it's a lot more nimble and personable, I think, than random tweets. And uh, for folks that maybe missed this and have been asking, uh, Sam is recording this, so we will get this uh, posted somewhere. Um, so folks that missed out live or joined late can, can catch back up if they want to. And uh, I don't know, I would consider this as a success and I would like I to agree. do this. I'd like to do more of these. I think we had some great questions come up that were out of scope for our, our uh, for us today, but I'd like to bring back um, more folks. Uh, we've had requests for Tashi. I definitely know there's a lot of things we could get Sean Barron in here and talk about. So it seems like the, the chat's here for it. Everybody's ha had a good time as well. And uh, I would like to make this a more regular occurrence. I am seeing um, a request to close us out with a pun, Unishek, do you have, I know it's not Tuesday, do you have anything at the ready? Let me uh, get ready. Oh, he <laughs> well, while, while he's getting pocket. ready, um, I did see a comment early, way earlier that I wanted to echo. Someone had suggested that someone in the community make an Uber Nick shaped map, and I think uh, that's a pretty good idea. What does that mean though? It's like the map top down looks like Uber Nick's face? 
I think uh, it's, like the, the I don't know. Cortana. I mean, that's oh, yes. that that would Jeez. be the, that would be the forgers. You know, you just take an interpretation of Ubernick and go from there. Please don't tell me that's like the first content loadout for your uh, your combat like testing grounds uh, playlist. <laughs> oh my god, god, that'd be funny. <laughs> I think we get a lot of safety. The Nick Cortana map, I think we get a lot of complaints and reports to safety, and I feel like there'd be some strikes issued. So that that sounds too uh, too disturbing. But again, John, sorry, was that a yay or a nay? You got any? You you want to close us out with a pun, or you're not prepared? For a distant future, uh, terrible joke Tuesday. Um, the British call it a lift. Americans call it an elevator because they were raised differently. <laughs> okay. Come on. All right. Come on. That... <laughs> hey, that, I, uh... I think the chat has, has they have spoken. That, that is really... <laughs> You've given the people what they've asked I'm... for. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad we got some fans in the chat. Yeah. And you and Even you. Even if y'all aren't fans, yes. I'm glad we got fans in the chat. All right. Well, uh, sure. Thank you so much for taking My some pleasure. time out of your day to join us. That was super. This it. has been awesome. Sam, thank you for setting this all up. Unishak, thanks for uh, the puns and, and the bathroom live broadcast. That's been a, that's a very <laughs> unique experience for us all. <laughs> Reminder, head to head the waypoint. Uh, Unishek just dropped a blog at the start of this that has all the details on next week's uh, update that's coming on Wednesday. And then, uh, guys, I can't believe it. We're really not that far away from, from the launch of Season 4. I'm starting to feel it around the studio. We're getting ready to dust off the marketing machine. So uh, stay tuned. There's going to be some more stuff to come uh, as we start looking forward to Season 4. And I think that's it. I got nothing else. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It was yeah. super fun. Cool. Thank thanks you. Everyone. We will be back. We will do this again. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep. Cheers, See everybody. You.